Okay, so we're now recording. Hello TV viewers, on the benefit of the record, uh, TC Caramel here on a Sunday, uh, 11th of September. We broadcast every Sunday from 5 o'clock to 7 p.m. Uh, everyone is welcome to our social room. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about uh, privacy on the internet. Okay, now we all know that it's possible for people to get some of our details on the internet. And the only time they would worry about that would be if. I was going to buy something online and all we can do is basically use a few tools that's available to us to give us that wee bit of privacy. Now Firefox browser you can browse in, in private which will give you a bit of privacy or you can use this program here which I'm going to show you. Now, this program has its advantages and disadvantages. Let me go to the desktop first. Okay. This program has its advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantages is that your connection can be slow if you're browsing on the internet if you decide to use this program. Hi Chris. Okay, so the good thing about it is, the advantage about it is, it's secure. It works over a number of what they call onion routers. It's encrypted connection and it gives you privacy and no one will be able to read what you're doing on a computer. If someone tries to find out what you're doing on a computer, they can use what they call a packet snipper. There is, unfortunately, there is a load of tools available on the internet today and has been from I started in 1985. There's nothing we can do about it because these uh, tools are going to be available whether we like it or not. But we can make it hard for them. If someone is using a packet snipper and your connection is encrypted, they will not be able to read your personal information of your computer. So there's a program I wanted to show you. It's been out this long time, so I wanted to basically bring it to your attention. It is free and you can use it with Firefox browser. Okay, Harvey mate. Okay. So we're talking about privacy. If you, if you are worried about someone watching what you're doing on your computer, there is a number of options open that you can use. You can use proxy APs. Basically, that will hide your internet protocol address, which is basically like a telephone number that anybody else basically has ever used the old dollop system, the dollop modem, the 56 KB, will know that years ago you could dial into the modem and hack into the system. So we have moved on from, from them days. The last time I used the modem was in 1985, one of its operating system. But most of us are broadband connection now. So this program anyhow, it's called uh, TOR, okay, TOR. It's been out for a number of years and at the minute it's secure. So let's have a look at it, TOR, TOR. Now, TOR is what it says it is. It's, a, it's basically Browsing anomaly online. 
and it does work through encryption okay it is encrypted okay so let's go to the website and have a look now there is the web address if anybody wishes to use it personally I find that it slows my connection down but it is secure so before I go to download it I'll install it and then I'll remove it because it could interfere with the broadcast okay so Tor protects your privacy and defends yourself against surveillance and traffic analysts okay now there is no program 100% secure there is no computer 100% secure we have a number of options we can use programs to try and protect ourselves as long as you keep your computer up to date your programs up to date you don't have any ports left open especially raw ports okay telling that port is raw port it's easy hacked into so you want to go to your services and disable it okay so Basically, you're trying to make it harder for that particular person. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, why should I wait? If you decide to buy something on your computer, you don't want someone getting your credit details. Now, the latest security news is there's five new bank intrusions have been out this last couple of weeks basically when they get on your computer they log your bank details and these five Trojans are good now you don't have to be paranoid to use a computer I used to be years ago when I was being hacked by five so called hackers and the reason I call them so-called hackers because luckily for me at the end of the day I beat them okay but that's not to say that I'm going to beat everyone okay so Tor is a free software it's an open network and it helps you defend against or from a network surveillance threats there is some surveillance viruses that you can get put on your computer that can't be detected and they can record everything that you do on your system 007 spy uh, has been out for years and when somebody sends you what they call a tax file a tax file in an email it's not a virus it's a tax file you still can be hacked for that tax file okay and I will talk about hacker tax files later on Okay, I'll not show you how to use them, but I will talk about them so you know what to look for in the next couple of weeks or months ahead. Okay, so we understand what Tor is for family, business, and etc. Even the military, okay, use it. So let me open up this page so we'll get a better look at it. This is exactly what it is, and that is the way it just works. Now, There is a Firefox add-on button for Tor that you can put on your Firefox browser. As I say, friends, if you're broadcasting on Blog TV, uh, it will slow your broadcast down depending on your internet connection. If you've got 10 gigabytes download, you're okay. If you're on a 2 gigabyte download connection, the smaller package, it will slow you down. And this is what I have personally experienced from it. Now, I can't see the chat room at the minute, uh, so if you have any questions, if you can hold off, basically, until I go through this, and I'll do my best to answer it as best I can for you. Now, there is a load of these different programs on the internet. This is not just the only one you can use, but this is the one I want to talk about today. Okay, so I'm going to download it. Okay, now, 
one to seven Vista XP. Okay, it's also available for the Apple OS. I'm not sure why it's available for the the LAN version on the MacBook because I just updated the LAN that was only brought out in July, and obviously Linux. Now I use Firefox, or sorry, not Firefox. I use Fedora 15 Linux, which is based on Red Hat. I also use Mint Linux on one of the other computers, and I also use Ubuntu Linux, and I also use Open Source Linux, along with Windows 7 and Windows XP on the Mac computer. Uh, because I like to learn as much as I can about them all, you know. Okay, so Windows 7 based their XP. Now, you can donate if you wish. It's entirely up to yourself. And there's documentation on it here. Okay. Hopefully, I'm not going too quick for you. And uh, hopefully, you can understand what I'm saying. So I'll slow down my speech a wee bit. Windows 7, okay, here. Now, this is Google Chrome browser that I'm using at the moment, along with Firefox, okay, and I do normally use Opera Browser 2, or SeaMonkey Browser, or Flock Browser, which is a social networking browser. Friends, don't be using Safari Browser at the minute, <coughs> because there is a hack out on the security certificates, okay. Now, security certificates basically work that whenever you go to browse to another website, you've got what they call a protocol handshake from your data or data to the other computer or server. And they check what they call certificates. I'm sure we've all seen certificates from time to time. Most of us click OK because we don't understand how to read them, okay? Check that they're signed whenever you go to read them. So don't use Safari browser at the minute. There is a flaw and Apple computers haven't produced the patch for it yet. Okay, so this is Google Chrome browser. I'm going to click save. And this is it here, okay? So I'm gonna basically try and run this for you to let you see how it works. So if you notice here, okay, if you're not sure, go to your help and support in your system. Or Google and find out, or research and find out before you. Make sure it comes from a genuine website. Let me lower this so I can see what I'm doing here. So this is Tor T O R. It's so many programs you can use. You can use what they call a proxy web server. I'm going to go to the downloads folder here. Okay, Tor. Oh, hold on a second. Right. So, let me go back. You notice it was extracted to the, the download folder. But when you're, using, uh, when you're using Google Chrome, you go to the documents first and then your downloads, okay? Now, you will see a thing there about hosts. So, we'll talk about how to protect your host file and other videos, okay? There is a, a way that your host file can be hijacked and redirect it. We'll do that in another video. Okay. Okay, so we'll start the Tor browser. Now, you will notice that this is the control panel here. And it is loading the network. Okay. 
Now, I'm hoping it doesn't interfere with the broadcast. And also, I have a bit of uh, security on, which might stop it from connecting. So, let's see what happens. Right, it's not responding at the minute, friends, so you'll have to bear with me a second. When you are setting this up, I would give you one piece of advice. Turn your security off until you set it up and then turn your security back on. Because sometimes it will interfere with your firewall, okay? So, let it sit there and see what happens because I don't, there's a going now, okay? Now, Tor is, let me bring this up so you can see. Tor is connected to the network, okay? And, all right, okay, so your security product may ask you permission. So let's lower this here for a second, and let's close this one. Okay, it's connected to the Tor network, which basically goes, goes over a number of Onion routers, okay. And it, it's encrypted. Now right, we'll go to the settings. If you want Tor to start when your computer starts, you click this box here. Okay. And you have the network. If you use a proxy IP, you tick this box. If your firewall only lets you connect to certain ports, you tick that box. If your ISP blocks connections to the Tor network, you tick that one. Normally, you won't have to tick any unless you're using a proxy IP. You can relay traffic for the Tor network. Personally speaking, I don't do that. I run it as a client only. That's just the way I do it, okay? Services, I don't normally bother unless I want to basically provide a hidden service appearance. Advance. Now, you can change the control port number. Basically, if you use Skype or MSN or etc. It comes by a default port number. Everyone knows, or most people know, what the default port number is. So if you're using Skype, I would suggest that you change the port number to a slightly higher number. Two reasons. People know what the default port number is. They can try to write to that particular port. Second reason is, sometimes on Skype, when you have a bad connection, if you turn the port number up slightly, basically by changing it, you'll get a better reception and quality. Okay, you can leave this here where it is. It automatically, you can have it set by default to random generated passwords. So your password will change every time you use it. That's my understanding of it. Okay, and you've got a help button. Which basically, I'll explain to you how I run it, etc. Now, we'll click OK here. Let's view the network. Okay, now, this is the interesting part about the Tor network. You will notice that there's a lot of countries use it, okay? A lot of top countries and governments use this because I know this for a fact because I've been using this program over the years. And that's why I believe it is safe. These are connections at the minute.
that one's Germany, okay? So, you're going to be protected, friends. If you're worried about your privacy, use Tor. It is quite simple to set up. Until you get used to it, and then you can start changing a few settings on it. It does come with the hub file. So these are the networks for Tor, okay? 1018 relays online. That's how many is online. Different countries. Again, use Tor on Linux. You can use it on a Mac, and you can use it on Windows. If you're not broadcasting on blog TV, I would suggest, if you're worried about your privacy, use this, okay? Now, you can click use a new identity here, and it will give you a new identity any time you want to click it. You can stop it. Now, you can use it for relaying traffic in and out of your computer too. Personally, I don't. I use it as a client. That's receiving and that's sending. When you click hide. Now, basically, I'm connected to Tor, okay? I'm connected to Tor and it's working. Simple as that. Well, I, what do you want to do then is send that shortcut to your desktop for holiness. And it'll go to your desktop. Now you will notice that I have my desktop icons hidden. Okay, for a reason. If you're broadcasting your computer, you want to be shown very little because you don't know who's watching your computer. And unfortunately, in the bad world, there's not many programs on how to hack this or how to hack that. So that's just me being sort of sensible by not showing them. Now, hold on, it says I'm not using it at the moment, so hold on. Let me uh, refresh this. Okay, so that might have been a bit boring for you, but it's something. For the blog TV viewers that aren't in the room, it is a way of helping you to secure your computer. Okay, and it's called T O R Tor. Now, people say that how can I stable permanently not coming into a computer? You're only as good as you learn. There's always somebody out there more smarter, knows that wee bit more. But if your ports are closed on your computer and someone is using a port scanner or a packet snipper or any other tool, okay, or the tray using a password cracker, if your passwords are secure, if your ports are closed, if your programs are updated, we have no vulnerabilities on your computer. It makes it that wee bit harder for someone to gain access to your system. Don't open emails you don't recognize because you can use a number of ways without using a virus, okay? So you want to, basically, common sense is all it is, okay? Plus, it can save you money in the long run. So that's Tor T O R. Now I'm just
turned it off because I don't want it running at the minute okay another thing is I want to do is this is for the Windows systems Mac is slightly different and so is the Linux I want to basically don't want it running at startup okay Okay, so it's not running. Okay, that's dead on. So friends, that's Tor. T O R. Tor browser. Now, there should be a Firefox auto. Now I could have done that through my Firefox browser, but then I would have lost my broadcast, okay? So you want to look for Tor, okay? If you're using Firefox, you want to go T-O-R. Now Tor comes with its own browser. You can use it or you can use an add-on, okay? T-O-R. Let's see if they have one here. Tor, T-O-R. Let me check. Torrent Finder. There used to be an add-on for Tor in the Firefox browser. So you'll have to search and find out if there's a an add-on in your Firefox browser. There used to be one. And it's been a while from me I've actually used it on the Firefox browser. I normally would uh, use it the other way. So let's go a second. Or Razor. And it says here you're currently running the version. The software is running of Tor software. Okay. So that's one way basically if you're gonna buy something online, you want to make sure you've got a corrupted connection, okay? Now Firefox does come by clicking browse private I think that's what it is I thought they would have had an add-on in here for Tor to be honest with you right let's close that okay so that's an introduction to Tor, friends. You can go to the website, as I say, and uh, there's documentation on it. But basically, once you install it, it'll automatically start running for you. Go to your documents if you're using Google Chrome. Obviously, if you're downloading it for Firefox, just go straight to your downloads folder, and that's where you'll see it. That's where it's extracted to, okay? So that's one of probably hundreds of ways or maybe thousands of ways of braving or sorry browsing privately private I mean sorry okay so it protects your privacy basically free open source for Windows Mac and Linux on an Android which is basically a, a phone a mobile phone Okay, this is what I was looking for, but I couldn't find it by going to the add-on, so let's have a look here. Oh, stable. Always install a stable version. Okay, so this is the, tarp, the, the button for Firefox browser. That's what it was.